Well, it's time to bring it on with some of the email questions that you all have sent in. Pat, this first one comes from Tina, who says, I know the Bible says we're to be good stewards of our money. My husband and I are blessed with good jobs, and we love to give to ministries, tithe, and not spend wastefully. However, I sometimes like getting a manicure, getting someone to help clean the house, eating out, etc. Part of me feels like I'm helping to stimulate the economy and helping someone have a job. But another part of me feels guilty for spending money on those things. How do we know how to have the right balance between being good stewards and enjoying what God has given us? Well, the enjoy is the thing. The Apostle Paul said he gives us richly all things to enjoy. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't believe that God has given income to you and your husband that you could have to be monks or ascetics. Uh, you're giving. You're giving generously. Uh, you help the poor and the needy, and God wants to bless you. And if you want to go out and have a meal occasionally or get somebody to do your housework for you or whatever, uh, th there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, Just you know, the fact that you're thinking about it, I think, says that right. you're But I, I mean, you know, whatever's not a faith is sin. So, uh, but I, I think you've got to, you know, say that God gave you these things to enjoy. He's put it in your hands to enjoy. And as long as you take care of the poor and the needy and and you bless him and you give to the work of the Lord. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, enjoy what's there. You don't waste it, but uh, uh, it doesn't hurt to enjoy a little bit of what he's put in your hands. Okay, this is a viewer who says, I'm a young woman who is addicted to pornography. I've tried to stop many times knowing it's sinful and I'll go to hell for it, but nothing seems to work. I feel that regardless of what I may do, I'll still go to hell. <laughs> I've talked to God many times. I know he's listening, but I don't get a response from him. What should I do? Well, I, I know this may shock some people, but watching porn is not going to send you to hell. Uh, it really isn't. And you're not going to hell because you uh, have got an addiction. Uh, it's one more type of addiction. Uh, there's addiction to cocaine. There's addiction to uh, meth. There's addiction to alcohol. And this is a type of addiction. It's the type of sickness. And you need to ask the Lord for deliverance. If you need to have a, a, a group meet mm -hmm. with you to pray with you, by all means. Uh, but, you know, the Bible says he made a show of them openly, triumphant in his cross. And I think you need to make a show of some of these things openly. You know, you need to get with somebody and, and confess, say, look, I've got this problem. Uh, it may be, you know, the, the Apostle Paul said it's better to marry than to burn with lust. And I... I think you obviously are single and you've got fantasies about sex and, and the pornography, which is so readily available, feeds on that thing. But, but stop thinking you're going to hell. Realize that the cross of Jesus Christ, uh, the Bible says, and I want you to pray this, the 51st Psalm, create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. And you pray that, and every day I want you to worship God. I want you to fill your mind with the Scriptures. And, and don't uh, expose yourself. Don't buy porn. Don't flip it on the television. Don't subscribe to porn channels. You know, don't do that. And, and let your mind be focused on Jesus. And, and fill yourself with something beside this. But, and stop thinking you're going to hell. I mean, th that's the worst thing, is you say, well, I'm going to hell anyhow. I might as well, you know, enjoy it. Uh, no, you're not going to hell. God loves you, and the cross of Jesus Christ avails despite your sin. He will forgive you abundantly if you ask him. All right. Okay, this is Victoria who says, Pat, for years I've heard many Christians claim a verse found in Acts 16.31. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved, you and your household. My pastor claims that that promise was made exclusively for the Philippian jailer and we cannot claim it for ourselves. Is this true? What are your thoughts? Well, a little of both. I mean, th that promise was made to the Philippian jailer. He, you know, the apostle, the, the man said, what must we be, do, do to be saved? I mean, Paul and Silas were singing the, the gate of the prison was open. The jailer was scared to death. He got on his knees and said, what must I be to be saved? And Paul said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you'll be saved in your household. Uh, that does not apply that everybody uh, who believes on the Lord Jesus Christ, his household is going to get saved. It just doesn't say that. So your pastor's right. At the same time, if a verse of Scripture 
takes on a life to you. It becomes a so-called rhema. It's the spoken word of God to you, and you can say, that, is, that speaks to me, and I appropriate that as a promise for my family. I think that will work. You can't just say, well, it's not for you, or it's for him. Mm -hmm. uh, the promises of God are yea and amen for everybody. All right. This is Zanita who says, I've been married to my husband for 14 years and I love him, but I don't respect him because all he does is sit on the couch. It wasn't always this way. It started six months ago when he became unemployed. We're about to lose our home and he acts like he doesn't care. He is a Christian and I've tried to encourage him with the word, but I'm getting frustrated and losing hope. He won't even go to church anymore. How can I help him? What you can help him is to support him. A man has lost his job. You don't know how much he's invested in that job, how much it meant to him. That may have been his life. He, 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 the image of himself as a productive worker, and suddenly that's been shattered. He's had a terrible grief. It's like a, a death of the family, and he's grieving. Instead of saying, well, I don't respect him because he sits on a couch, what you ought to say is, I want to help you in your grief. You ought to sit with him and say, dear, let's pray together. We're going to overcome this. I'm with you. You're my husband. I love you. And I know you've lost a job, but there are other jobs. There are other places, and I'm going to help you. And together, we're going to overcome this thing. Mm -hmm. But stop down. He's had a grief. You don't know what that's done to a man's self-esteem. You don't know what he's gone through. And it's, he's, um, all right, my director says to shut up. <laughs> Thanks for those questions.